So, Pop Smoke Killer is making his runs right now. The alleged killer of Pop Smoke, or at this point, if you're Pop Smoke family, it doesn't matter which one of them pulled the trigger. So, we're going to say the men who, needless to say, were junkies out here and decided to rob this man of his life, rob this man of his youth, rob this man from being lover of the greatest women's on earth which is our melanated sisters i seen this brother having a lot of people who's on his side talking about he was young to do this and he was young to do that but that young man been sitting behind bars for almost four years he's like 20 21 now i think 21 to see how people coddle these generations of our young ones that we got and not hold them accountable now you see this nigga doing the most first he disrespected Bashar by saying oh I thought he was a model I just thought he was a model but within that same breath you can insinuate that he already like that's him admitting he been knew who Pop Smoke was but he didn't know Pop Smoke was a rapper he just thought he was a model see it's that type of mocking of the people who are not living anymore and then the families of that same ain't crap type of dude you feel me because I don't know the killer name but a hey, young man, when you speak to us, you're from California. Chest out, chin up. Because you talk like a straight bitch, bro. And it's, it, it's the older dudes behind you, dude. Because I'm not giving this young crap dude a pass, bro. But it's the OGs. And, and, and the other dude who went to the interview with you, bro. These crash out old men who refuse to grow up. They're in their 30s. They're in their 40s. They're in their 50s. And then their 60s, bro. What leadership or militant vibration you feel by seeing an old head who's still practicing, normalizing the type of garbage we got in our communities, bruh? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was bothered, bruh. And it's easy for me to come at Adam 22 and be like, he's exploiting and he's doing this. He's, but, but it's us, bro. Because if it wasn't Adam, it could have been John the Hancock coming all the way from outer space. You Negroes would have still watched that interview. I try, I'm not going to be fake. I tried to watch the interview for at least a couple of minutes, bro. But it's that condescending, I'm I'm so cool, but I can't talk. I'm, I'm so cool, so I'm going to talk mellow and chill. No, you're a bitch, bro. You've been one since you came out your mom's womb. All you niggas who had to join a gang and couldn't stand on your own, pure bitch, bro. I'm not going to say, it's never been cool to not make your own cool table. I've never remembered all them years being teased, being called an ugly dude by females. It, it's never made me have peer pressure to crash out or go be part of this group of squares. Because you guys are the real squares. The killers, the robbers, jakes in them, homie, homie vision type of lames who do that type of route. We can keep going on and I can preach all day, but it's not going to get through not even the, the knuckleheads, but the people who honor and worship this type of group of individuals the group of people who wake up every day to see what they're doing you have never like i give out to the homeless and all that but the junkies you have never woke up and said let me see what the junkies are doing today that is do you you guys literally do that every day you see one of these so-called propped up little nothing ass niggas bro they're junkies they're bums and they've never been dudes who who are granted respect in our society but we're going backwards for the last 30 years we've been uplifting these dudes making movies about them giving them a place to speak about more junky behavior actually listening to these condescending views like these niggas is somebody what happened to the females when I was eight years old, seven years old? I seen them. I seen them see these junkies approach them and they look down on them and they hold their nose like, get your bum ass away from me. We need to bring these females back and we need to bring the cool niggas back. Remember the, the real cool table, not the fake propped up cool table. That's the exterior of, oh, I just want to fit in through peer pressure. I'm talking about the real cool table where you could have been the most nerdiest of nerdiest of dude. Don't matter if your mom and dad couldn't afford to buy you Jordans. Them dudes made you feel accepted you know how to talk about sports come along and take this walk with me young man you know how to you feel me do the jokes in the class and you just know how to elevate they wanted you to be around them because they were so cool that it don't matter what type of dudes who came around them it didn't turn off their ignited flames bro they still held true to who they were bro they meaning they made everybody a cinderella for the moment
Your glass slippers might fall off after 12, but when you was around them cool dudes, you knew you belonged, bro. It gave you it gave you nutrient up here. But now these these so-called niggas today, they, they embrace these degenerates, bro. And I don't even think the word de de degenerate is enough for this type of ain't shit dudes, bro. Pop Smoke at the end of the day was a man who was in his comfort of his home. Like, I could easily blame Mike D. I used to go at Mike D every day, and every day I went at Mike D. Mike D hit me up before on some gangster time, and I ain't gonna lie, much love to Mike D. But that's not what made me tell Mike D, save his energy. Because he hit me up four years after I did those videos, and I told him, bro, no, nothing to say, bro. I've elevated and I've grown from then. I just had so much love for Pop Smoke. Everybody could have get this work. I went in on everybody until I realized when Complex Magazine was trying to do an interview with me and there was a white lady. I, I don't know which corporate entity she worked for. This is true story. And she was speaking to me about Pop Smoke life and all that, right? And it was as if he was not even a human, bro. He was just this bigger than life, nothing as... I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, do they even think of what this man, mom, brothers, and family got to go through? Do they know? Forget about what this industry is. Pop Smoke being this, you feel me? Being this bigger than life, ulterior motive, bro. No, I look at Pop Smoke like my brother, like you guys are my brother, like any other black dude or even any human being in general I seen got killed the wrong way. It's something in my heart. You can call me soft. You can call me weak, but I know that's the attribute that make me a man. It's something we we all got superhero instincts in us because when I see them dying like that, bro, it, it, it instantly flash out like, damn, bro, can you imagine mommy going through this? My mom or daddy. I'm not afraid to call my dad daddy. You guys can think weird, but the dudes who have that homophobic, erotic mentality that comes in your mind as soon as I say the word daddy, that's something you're hiding and you haven't yet dealt with. So you can remain close-minded, but I'm going to call my father daddy. Because when I genuinely see him smile, you know, I'm not going to cry up or nothing like that. But damn, bro, you know what I'm saying? The love that was given to you, bro. And now here come these so-called new cool niggas. You took that all from a mom and dad, bro. You you snatched it. That's We all got pop smokes in our lives, in our families. Forget about them being rappers. Because the same thing could be said about Fulio, whether he deserved it or not. But we, we promote these ain't shit type of dudes. So you can make fun of Adam 22 and say, I'm not even trying to defend that man because he is a culture vulture. You know what I mean? But how long do you get start tired and calling people culture vulture when you're the one clicking and watching? You're the one who's denigrating your brother like me for Adam 22 because you'll call him a culture vulture when you're amongst the ranks of other people. But you'll never go to him and let him know that. But you'll go to me. But let's fast forward to Pop Smoke Killer. To see him propped up and sit up like that, he doesn't know the laws of the scriptures applies because there will be no sheer tears, none at all, when the most high rips you apart in the worst way ever because it's coming and you smell it. So you can continue to be in this cool mode like your cool mode D, but I know it. You niggas don't like a dude like my platform because I know you better than you know yourself. I know when you look at that mirror, you cry at night. I know it sounds unfamiliar to you type of dudes, I sound like a dude that's just rambling. That's why a little silly bitch can go to my comment section and she can tell me, I feel when you wake up, you're just yapping. Any words of the truth that cuts like a sword is always going to be yapping to yapakadu, yapakadu, meaning a chinkling court, court jester. You're a court jester for the masses. Every single day you wake up, everything you spout is only to acquiesce to those you want to cater to, you want to be accepted by. I don't have your problems. I wake up, I could cry for my brother. I could hug my sister knowing she was done wrong and she was misused and she was thrown out like yesterday's trash. I can give her that hug and nourishment because I am that weak vessel that's trying to continue this image of the stronger vessel that I am. And with all that reality, it makes me the stronger man for knowing that I'm the weaker vessel. Because when you know you're weak, you know there's room for improvement. You know there's room to make yourself grow stronger. So when I look at these people making excuses for the pop smoke killer or giving them platforms to speak about how they speak, we need to start shunning them from our community, letting them know how much a piece of crap they are. Because all you guys who are 30 something years old and older, you letting this ain't ish type of dude t talk to you guys as if he has some type of philosophy, this follower, this gimmick. 
This dude who was not even brave enough after four years being locked up to finally mature into that rose that grew from the concrete that once upon a time a gentleman named Mr. Shakur who told us about. So your inability to grow and rise from that concrete tells us you add nothing to the community and yes, you should be thrown out. Yes, you should be forgotten about. And yes, we should raise our hands and place it upon you or anybody that makes ain't type of Christians like you that come about. I think it should be deleted in the worst way, in the fastest, quickest way and faster than a microwave. Get rid of these type of ain't shit dudes. We can't no longer talk about them in this glorious way as if they contributed something. They contributed nothing since they came from their mom womb to see you people speak in a way about this dude like he counts. And I'll, I'll be the first one to say this ain't no messy Jesse Jackson type of preach. Everybody don't count, dog. Scripture literally lets you know two thirds of your people won't make it. Stop pretending that everybody matters and everybody count. Everybody don't goddamn matter, bro. And you can see it. If they have a sign that's out your door telling you that they're nothing, then treat them as so, bro. No more of this, this weakness and trying to make sure trash can become. No, it can't, bro. Trash will always remain trash. Now, something that was hidden amongst the ranks of trash was never trash. It was always gold. It just was folded and un unbeknownst announced to all of us, bro. It was hidden away from us. But don't get mistaken by that. That never was trash. You know when you see trash. So I think we all need to treat it as so and stop pretending this garbage is some type of rock and diamond and a rose that grew from the concrete. No, it hasn't, dude. There's no foundation. There was no fertilizer to allow it to grow. You ain't shit people made it grow because you follow suit to what these type of individuals are. So what I'm basically saying, it's time to rise up and, and be like the cool nigga from the 70s that was so fly, he knew he wasn't ready to do or die, meaning I want to multiply. I want to continue living to the, I see the grave become all part of what I am. The grave vision, man. I'm, I'm black, man, not Batman. Don't let that go over your head.